Welcome to the Art Lady channel. Today we're going to be making ladybugs and we're going to be learning the parts of the ladybug. I hope you enjoy this lesson and if you haven't already be sure to subscribe. To start the ladybug what I'm going to do is I'm going to decide where I want to put my ladybug on the paper. I have 12 by 18 paper here today and I want to have a giant ladybug and then I want to have some flowers or some leaves in the background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my picture and I'm just going to turn it so that the corner is facing down toward me. Then I'm going to place my hand toward the center of the page, just like this. And on the tip of my finger, now notice here, there's some space here, and then this is the center of my paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do a line longer than three fingers right here right to the middle of my page this is going to going to be where i start the top of the ladybug from here what i'm going to do is i'm going to go diagonally up and diagonally up on this side making sure that they're the same length when we do our butterfly we want to make sure that our butterfly is symmetrical on both sides. The first thing that we're going to be forming right here is the head of the, of the ladybug. And so we're gonna connect both lines together neatly. And then I'm gonna add a little bump in the very middle. So you find your middle, go over, just a little bump here. And from that bump, I'm gonna go ahead and create the ladybug's antenna. He's got two, or she, two antennas on each side, or I'm sorry, one on each side. So he's got one antenna on each side. Curve it up and over. Same on the other side, up and over. Now the antennas have a thickness to them. So we're just going to come down and make it very skinny as skinny as you can so go slow because you don't want them to be really fat below this bump there are two square shapes so i'm going to do a line and a line on each side down over and back down over and back they don't have to be perfectly square but some type of a square shape now i'm going to do a curve on each side here. So I'm going to do a C-shaped curve this way and a C-shaped curve on this side. So this forms the head of the ladybug. Now we're going to be making the eye of the ladybug right here. And the eye is a compound eye and it has lots of little dots like this. Now you can go ahead and do these dots on your own um, after the video. From here, we're going to draw a straight line underneath. We're only gonna skip down just a little bit right here. Now this whole top area is the head. Under the head, on all insects, you have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. So the part that we're gonna make now is underneath is the thorax but in a ladybug only and there's a few other bugs that have this too it has a pronotum which is a hard shell covering that covers the thorax in a ladybug because the head and thorax protrude from the shell area it needs some more protection so the pronotum is a more protection so this is what we're making right now the pronotum so and here's the word over here so what we're gonna do is a straight line. Now from this side, we're gonna come down, just curve it down and curve it down. Then I'm gonna bring the line to meet both sides. So we have the head, the pronotrum, which protects the thorax, curve it over and just bring it over. And it's okay if your lines aren't exactly like mine. Different species look differently. Now, on this ladybug, there's another false eye here, which is another eye patch. 
it's white patches. So all of this is black except these two big spots, and this is the compound I here. Now we're going to make another kind of a freeform square shape. It's not perfectly square, so it's called freeform. But this is another white patch here. And if yours isn't perfectly square, don't worry about it. I kind of followed this shape here. So two white patches here. Now I'm going to kind of slide up a little bit. Now a ladybug is also unique in that it has an elytra. Elytra. It's kind of different. If you've ever looked at a ladybug or seen one fly, most of the time I just see them with the elytra closed. The elytra is the beautiful red spot, red part of the ladybug, the hard shell with black spots. The elytra is actually hiding the wings. And what the elytra does is it opens up and then the wings come out. A lot of people don't know about that. So what I'm going to have you do now is I'm going to have you envision a large circle or oval because sometimes ladybugs are circular and sometimes they're oval. So we're going to go a large circle here and then we're probably going to come down to about here. So from the center here, let's find the center and mark a straight line. And then I'm going to come down and decide how far you want your circle to be, your circular ladybug. And I'm going to come down to say here. So come down straight and end here. So now I'm going to go ahead. See how artists plan? So now I'm going to go ahead and draw my line straight down. I just kind of drag my hand. And it's okay if it's not exactly even. We're trying to get it symmetrical, same on both sides. Now, a way to make a curve, I want to come out and curve around. This can be oval or circular shape, okay? So I want to come up, around, and back down to here. I'm going to, if you practice with your hand here, kind of pivoting it and turning it, see how I'm turning my hand? I can come out, around, and slowly back to my spot. It's made it almost like my hand almost acted as a compass, okay? And I'm going to do the same on the other side. I'm going to turn my paper, and I'm going to pivot my hand. Now, practice first. It's okay if they're not exactly, I can already see mine. It's not exactly the same, but that's okay because... Sometimes a ladybug's view, you don't see it straight on. You don't see it exactly straight on. So different perspectives. When you finish your art picture, this little tiny lopsided or something off, if you don't like it, it it's not going to show in the end. Once you add all your color, your leaves, your pattern, whatever else. If you have something that you really, really, really don't like, you can always add a piece of grass or leaves on top of this later to hide any mistakes. That's what's great about being an artist. We can easily put something in. So now what we're going to do, what we've actually just formed is the elytra. Underneath this is where the wings are, but we don't see the wings. Now ladybugs have how many legs? Four. Six. 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 All insects have six legs. So, and the ladybug legs are really tiny and really small. In normal, normal, when you see them on your hand if they land or on your arm if they land on you or a plant, you don't usually see them. If you want to put them in, you can. That's up to you. If you do put them in, I would do just really tiny, kind of just like sticks or lines coming out at a slight curve. I would do two here, just coming out really small, and then one in the back here, really small. And then, of course, if you're going to do it, you kind of want to make it the same on both sides. So it's symmetrical. Really small. And like I said, you don't have to add the legs if you don't want to. Now, this, the, the particular ladybug I'm looking at, and there's hundreds of species of ladybugs, the one I'm looking at has this large spot here, so it's and it divides in the elytra. 
So I'm gonna do it curved, one side on one, one half on one side, the other half on the other. And this ends up getting split. Spots on a ladybug are black, and then the shell is red. Of course, as an artist, whatever, however you wanna finish this, that's up to you. And this particular ladybug, I believe had two spots here. If you do a spot, try and make it symmetrical on the other side. So if I do, say if I do a half spot, I can do a spot near the legs. So I'm making a half circle, and then I'll add two full circles here. Just take your time and go slow with your circles. I start off like the letter C curve, and then I finish with the back C, backwards letter C. It's up to you how many spots you wanna to add to this. And I'll show you some student examples um, after my lesson from second grade. And then I'll sh also show you the class I have live right now, which is third grade. So go ahead, put your spots in. The first group I'll show you is my second graders. So design your spots any way you want. Same on both sides. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some things to the background. With this, you can add giant flowers, giant leaves. Um, one, of my, one of my favorite artists is named Georgia O'Keeffe and she lived um, in the 1800s. She was born in the late 1800s, 1887, and died in 1986. What she wanted everybody to do was to look at all the small things in life. So what she did was she made her artwork really huge. She drew pictures of things that were small, but yet drew them very large on her canvas. So she would take things that were tiny like flowers or insides of flowers and draw them very large on a canvas and make the canvases very large. That way you took time to look at the little things in life and enjoy life more. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make some giant flowers or giant leaves behind our ladybug, kind of in the style of Georgia O'Keeffe. Look at some of these cool leaves here. So can you just imagine your ladybug on some of these flowers? And here's the black and white. She was famous for her poppies. This poppy picture is what she was most famous for, her poppy. Now, I don't know if I would choose a poppy because if we're gonna use black and red color for our ladybug, we probably wanna choose some other colors for the background designs. So right now we're gonna do a large flower or large leaves behind our yeah, ladybug. Of having green leaves. So I'm gonna get creative with my leaves. Let me show you what I'm gonna end up doing with my leaves. I want to do some gorgeous veins and color pattern with some blues and yellows and then paint green on top. So I'm just going to do some really cool leaf shapes in my background and then my ladybug will be the contrasting red and black and it'll just pop off the page so it'll look beautiful. So for me, what I'm going to do is just make giant leaves because remember the ladybug, let me show you how big a ladybug is. A ladybug is as big as the tip of a crayon or a pencil tip. It's one quarter inch. So think about if something is a quarter inch sitting on a leaf, even if the leaf is not exaggeratedly big or huge, it's still gonna be huge on a paper because we've blown up this ladybug to be bigger than our hand. So I'm gonna make a leaf now and I'm gonna come the edge of my page, I'm gonna just do my leaf like this. And I want the point to show. And then I'm just gonna curve it down. So it's huge. And what's nice about making something so big like this, I don't have to make a hundred leaves. I just gotta do one. And then I'm gonna have the vein and design in my leaf come. And I'm gonna have it come off the center. I don't want it to come right to the ladybug here. And actually, you could even do these veins with your oil pastel. You don't necessarily have to do them with the marker. It probably will look better that way. So the veins of the leaves are coming in, 
And then I'm gonna add my beautiful patterns to this. Now, I have some negative space over here, so you can add another leaf or a part of a flower coming through or, or whatever else you want. And I'm just gonna have another leaf overlap. So it's gonna come off the page and it's just gonna overlap this way. And so I'll have the center come down and this just breaks up this beautiful composition here. Just like that. For this project, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be painting in the, sorry, the black areas, the spots, and the red area of the ladybug will be painted. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to outline with an oil pastel, and this gives a little oil barrier. That way this can become black, and then the red has a spot, a place to stop. And then for the leaves, instead of coloring the whole thing, I'm just gonna add some veining pattern or texture to the leaf. See what I've done here? Whoops. See what I've done here? So I've only colored the veins with dark and light colors, but it's up to you how you wanna color it. Some leaves, like coleuses and other plants, have beautiful colors in them, like pinks or whatnot. If you wanna add some of those colors in your veins, you could too. I'm gonna to do, see how I'm doing my veins now, or pattern? Some leaves even have spots. So I'm gonna add some of this pattern, or veining, in my leaves with my oil pastels. Then when I add watercolor paint on top with green, the veins will resist, or the colors will resist, and then it will show up um, and give beautiful pattern and texture. So the paint will resist and pop off this. So I'm adding some of my veins in here. And then I'm gonna go ahead, I don't see where it comes from here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add another color. So I'm giving two values, two to three values in here. Even yellow looks great. Some yellow veining or yellow coloring. And then I add my gorgeous green watercolor paint and this will be amazing. I'm also gonna color in the white spots with my white oil pastel, just like this. That way, when I paint this over, the head is black. When I paint this area over, the black will not get in my white spots. The oil pastel prevents a, makes a barrier on the paper. And I'm also gonna put some little tiny white dots in the <coughs> compound eye here. And my antenna, I'm gonna give a little light yellow color to. And now I'm gonna work up my other leaf, and then I'll show you how we painted it. I did the legs with black, and then I did the spots all in black, and then I did my leaves. Now I'm ready for my paint. I'm using some watercolor, pan watercolors, and I'm just gonna paint in, adding water to the color. Let's see, I'll start off with the red first. Water to the color, doing a gentle stir, and then I'm gonna go ahead and paint in my areas. I like tracing the edges first and then doing a large brush stroke to fill in. Now the more you swirl, the darker your color will be. So this is how I'm gonna paint the red and the black areas, just like this. And you can see how it kind of pops off. When I go on top of the black, it just pops off. But I did a nice thick area of black around this so that it's easier for me to paint. Right now I'm adding the black to the head. And since I did the compound eyes with white dots, I can just kind of go right over them and it leaves little speckles where they catch the light. And I want this black to be pretty intense, so I'm doing some, you know, I'm stirring it in a little bit longer. Doing a thicker watercolor, just so it's nice and black. Real intense black. 
Because remember, when watercolor dries, it lightens up a bit on the paper. There is the head and the pronotum done. So now I'm going to work on the spots. Stirring into my color. And it's looking good already. I may take, I did some oil pastel of yellow. I may just do an outline here of the black paint. Let it absorb into the edges a bit to highlight some of that yellow. There. I like that. So I'm going to finish up the spots and then I'll show you what it looks like. And here I have the leaves finished and I used some uh, liquid watercolor paints with a little bit of sparkle in it here. Um, that's from Sargent Art with a little watercolor magic. Um, just to give some fun text, uh, texture and sparkle to the background. Uh, but any kind of watercolor paint is fine for you to use for the leaves. And now I'm going to do some beautiful teal and then I will be done. Here is the finished picture. You can see I did some teal in the background. You can put any color in you'd like. Um, but have fun creating your own ladybug. And let me know in the comments how yours came out. Here are a few examples uh, from the second grade class, ages six and seven, who just did this sketch with me today. Um, I wanted to show you how each one looks a little bit different. You can make up however you want to do your spots, like I said. We have left some nice space on our paper so we can add some interesting plants and leaves and whatnot to our pictures. Um, also, we could even add some gorgeous flowers. So however you want to finish your picture, that's up to you. And here are some third grade examples that we did today in class. And we added several leaves to them. And this student actually, in the upper left corner, had a bite taken out of her leaf, which was uh, very creative. So add your own creative touches to your picture to make it yours.